technology iPhone 10R versus iPhone 14 speed test. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, go and see which one can get there first. Now we are looking at Apple's 2018 version of this phone, the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 10R. Apple A12 Bionic chipset, three gigabytes of RAM going up against Apple A15 Bionic chipset carried over from iPhone 13 with six gigabytes of RAM. And you see the iPhone 14 already showing to turn on much faster than the iPhone XR. So this is what we wanna see. We wanna see speed upgrades and we wanna see how much faster is the 14 because I'm betting a lot of people who have a XR will be coming over to the iPhone 14. Now, when we are looking at Face ID, we are looking at a very similar overall experience. I haven't really noticed a major change coming over to the iPhone 14. These are employing a pretty similar technology and I don't think you're gonna notice much of a difference when you come over here in terms of that. So there's no major change if you're looking for a faster unlocking experience. Now, they are both running the latest version of iOS, which is 16.1.1. Apple's currently working on the 6.2, 16.2 um, software that should be coming out maybe sometime this month or maybe in December, we'll have to see. But definitely you'll see right here, 16.1.1 the same. And I just wanna talk quickly before we start opening applications about how the general performance is of the iPhone XR day to day. I can tell you kind of just navigating through the home screens, it's as good as ever. You know, it's been 60 hertz since it came out and it feels really good to just kind of use the phone still. You know, iOS seems to hold on for a very long time, even on phones that are underpowered and this one's not really underpowered, but even as the chips age, they seem to do pretty well. The only thing I will say is that I have noticed a few stutters here and there when first booting up the iPhone XR or when downloading, you know, an application here and there, or opening up an app, some things will stutter and glitch sometimes. It's, it's, it's pretty rare, but now in 2022, it does happen a couple times. So I would say maybe a couple years left of life on that one. Over here, iPhone 14 being the latest and greatest, we already know this thing's gonna be butter. The only thing that I have a problem with the iPhone 14 is just the price point for having 60 Hertz. While it is still smooth, I have to tell you, it just kind of feels pretty similar to iPhone 11, 10R, iPhone, all the iPhones with 60 Hertz. So they need to do something on the next 15 and give us at least 90 Hertz or some kind of promotion to really take it to the next level. All right, so here we are at the app portion of this test. Let's go ahead and begin with calendar. You can see about the same. Now, what you're gonna look for is, is the iPhone 14 faster? And it doesn't really seem that way on just the main Apple apps. Let's see what it does. There, that was a little quicker. Let's see what it does when we do get into the third party stuff. So Apple's still doing great with their, you know, their software. I mean, you see 10R was actually a little snappier there. Going to games, you can see quicker on the iPhone 14. And then we'll go over here to the Today tab and you'll see 14. So that's where you'll really start to see it is when you start kind of navigating through these applications. Um, is this life-changing stuff? No, but is it a quality of improvement in terms of speed day to day? All this stuff adds up, so I'd say yes. Let's go into Instagram. Now, when we're in Instagram, you'll see we'll be faster here on the right. Not only that, you're gonna get a much better camera experience for doing Instagram photography and stuff like that. So do keep in mind, if you are looking for the better photography experience, you'll wanna do the upgrade to the 14. We'll go into Twitter here. And if you guys wanna see a full comparison between these two, that was to the right, let me know down below in the comments section of this video. Let's go to profile on both. You can see 14 faster there. By the way, what do you guys think of the verification stuff? You know, where you pay for a membership, get a verification. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll swipe up out of there. You'll notice that the animations and gestures are still very smooth on the iPhone XR though as well. Now over here on the right, we do have the 14 seeming to take the lead in most of these third-party applications so far. Scrolling through though, it's not like if you have a XR, you're not gonna be able to go do something on Groupon or you know, open things up. You know, If you're in Starbucks or whatever, yeah, they might open their app a little faster. But if you're online first, it's not like you're gonna slow people down. It's not that much slower in terms of you know how fast things open. One thing that is slower though is having LTE versus 5G. We'll go on to Best Buy here and you'll see Best Buy first here on the right. So I'm liking that I'm seeing snappier performance on pretty much everything we're doing here in third-party applications. 
on the iPhone 14. We'll go to eBay. And it's kind of like that in pretty much every major upgrade when it comes to CPU. I remember back when the iPhone 5S was getting old, its main applications would open fine, but everything was getting slower. And that's kind of what's happening here. So if you got a 10R and you, you want to do an upgrade, this is the year if you want that speed. We'll go on to Dead Trigger 2. Um, I will say, of course, the 15 will probably be the more smoother upgrade. Um, I think we're going to see a promotion next year, even on the base models, maybe even Dynamic Island. Because uh, Apple's not selling a ton of these things right now. We'll go into Subway Surfer by comparison to what they were expected to sell. They're still selling millions of phones, don't get it wrong. But what I'm saying is they're not selling as much iPhone 14, and especially iPhone 14 Plus, as expected. So I do expect bigger upgrades next year. We'll head up out of here. And you've seen gaming is still fine on the 10R. However, when you really start to play more serious games, because you can see even these lighter games are much faster on the 14, I could only imagine when you're starting to play graphically intensive games, the 10R will probably get too warm and it'll start to slow down. It's so weird because it's like, I remember, I never remember the 10R being ever slow, but I guess the phones are just getting much faster or something, or maybe it just got slower, I don't know. We'll go into Asphalt 9 here. And you'll see Asphalt 9 seemingly ahead here on the phone you would expect it to be on, the 14. So yeah, we're ahead here on the 14 by a long shot. And I, I would only imagine playing it, it's just going to be much slower. 10R did a little janky thing right there. We'll go into Geekbench 5. This hasn't been optimized yet, still for the 14s, but you can see we do have 6 gigabytes of RAM, so you're going to be doubling your RAM if you do this upgrade. Also, you can see right here, you are going to have a higher clock speed on that CPU as well, which means that it's more efficient, you know, when running these applications. You'll see right here, 3D Mark was first on the right. We'll go into iMovie and much faster there on the 14. Let's go ahead and open the camera. Let me bring in something really quickly here. So how about we bring in the iPhone 11 Pro in the wrong case, by the way. Got to cover it somehow. Let's go into camera. And you can see faster for the iPhone 14. We'll do it again, camera, and there we go. So pretty close, not a major deal. You're still gonna be able to take your photos on either phone. At the end of the day, you can see in this app test, the 14, I would say pretty much smoked the iPhone 10R. So definitely similar size. This is the 10R of 2022. If you're looking to get that upgrade, uh, it's worth it for sure. Now let's see if we can get a major difference when it comes to reopening because I would expect the 10R to reload here. We have three gigabytes of RAM on the left versus six. So, so far nothing. Temple Run 2, a little bit of delay on the 10R. There we go, Subway Surfers with the reload. We're not gonna wait on that reload if it starts reloading. And we have a reload again on the 10R, just reload the whole application. Has Starbucks ready, had eBay ready, Best Buy is ready to go. Amazon, look, see it was doing something there. We're going to Groupon, again with the reload. We're going to Twitter, had that one. So the 10R is holding some of them, not all of them. We're going to App Store and a reload there. So see, when you're pop, popping between applications, you know, going ahead for a verification code on something, you know, replying to email, going to check a message real quick, things are just gonna be faster, snappier day to day for you on a 14 you might see something reload or just slow down a little bit in those crucial situations. It'll probably be annoying too. Um, but overall, 10 hours still, I think, pretty darn good for being, you know, nearly four years old already. All right, guys, so let's go to Apple's website here for this internet browsing test and see how fast they do load these up. You could see, looks like the 10 hour was in the lead, but then the 14. Now, speed-wise, scrolling's gonna look similar. They're both 60 hertz. We do have an LCD screen over here, pinch to zooming, pretty similar. You're just gonna get much faster browsing performance on the iPhone 14 when it comes to just their you know, 5G stuff. So that is something to keep in mind overall. And here we are, the iPhone 14, 1748. That single core is a good 600 points more than the iPhone 10R with that 4721 destroying it in the multi-core. So major benchmark upgrades. And I would say overall, this kind of reflects what we've seen in the video. It wasn't too much better in just opening applications like single core stuff, but when we started, you know, running back through a bunch and you need more power in the multi-core, you can see 
the iPhone 14 shows it up and gaming, you'll want to do this upgrade as well. And here are our wildlife extreme scores as well. You'll see the overall score for the 10R 1276 over here, 2867. So more than double on the iPhone 14 with much better frame rates. So your iPhone 14, while it isn't the fastest phone in the world, it's definitely way faster than the iPhone 10R. Also, you will get a much bigger dual camera, um, but we're not gonna cover everything else in this video. I just wanted to go ahead and show you the differences in performance, real world stuff. You'll see the iPhone 14, just a little bit snappier when popping through apps, going through sub menus, stuff like that. And then really showing in the gaming department. If you want a video render, it'll smoke it there as well. I do have to say 10R is holding its own. It's still a usable phone if you want to wait to the 15, but it's definitely not super fast anymore. Let me know your, your experience with the battery life on 10R right now. And if you're going to do the upgrade to the 14, 14 plus or pros, let us know in the comments. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well. I'll catch you on the next episode and peace.